Chase Tree and Tractor Service with 25 years of experience in tree removal. Serving the mid coast of Maine, licensed and insured Maine arborist. Whether it's a pesky blowdown or a hard to get tree that needs removal. When you need an experienced professional, Jake Chase is the man for the job. Call 207 242 8961 or email him at chase tree and tractor service jc at gmail.com. LCTV is your nonprofit community media station. Please donate at lctv.org to keep us strong. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to What's Up. It's your favorite time of the week, a very somber day here in the state of Maine as we record this at about 10 o'clock Thursday morning. Uh, there's still a, a killer on the loose basically in Lewiston. Is, Just go to show you, you never know. You never know. I mean, this is things, Bobby, that happen in other parts of the country, other parts of the world. It doesn't happen in Maine, but it's happened in yeah. Maine. Yeah. And it's just, I guess you look at it as a matter of time, it's gonna be, I hate to say this, but our turn, yeah. it's crazy. Uh, you got, know, the mental health the situation. We're lucky, we got the coverage, we got Jason Warlock in here, we got, uh, you know, Todd Brackett in here to talk about what's going on and, uh, and, yeah. and how, what their response is. I mean, those those guys have been up all night yep. talking with their different law enforcement around to make sure their communities are being uh, safe. They've got everybody on high alert. Um, How about poor Cindy Wade at the hospital? She's been up there all night. The hospital has been on lockdown mode. Uh, you know, all hands on deck. Uh, they've got people that live in the Lewiston area. You that know, traveled, just so. little, just driving here. There's nobody on the road. Nobody on the road. Today. There's nobody at Mike's place. No. Yeah. Go figure. I mean, you'd think you'd have to go to Mike's place. Yeah, yeah. I know. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty sad. Hopefully, by the time this people at home are watching this tonight, they found this individual. Yeah. And uh, your heart breaks for the, the, the people in Lewiston there that this this all went down. It's yeah. just, I nev you never can make sense of it, Bobby. Yeah. You never can. Obviously, somebody has is, is got some serious mental, mental issues, but mm -hmm. it never can make sense of it. Yeah. You want to take your life, so be it. But take other people's. Mm. I never get it. Uh, and I, be honest. In all full disclosure, folks, I just picked this paper up at 7.30 yeah. this morning. Well, so well, I was in Mike's place because mm -hmm, yeah. I had to get the paper. Yeah, right. yeah so people can't get to work. If no. they live in that area, they can't drive to work. No, so. and, and I, I, my inside source down the hospital was telling me that they have people live over in Lewiston and they've made arrangements for them to have a place to go and, and shower yeah. and, and change and get a few minutes. So they've been up all night. Yeah. Uh, friend Cindy's been up all night down yeah. there, Brooks Bats and, and uh, the folks at John Martin's uh, the communication. They're on high alert because they may have to take, I mean, a lot of people injured over there. And, uh, any hospital can only take so many to well, a time. Well, especially Maine. Maine's yeah. hospitals aren't set up for a tragedy like yeah. this. Yeah, well, luckily in Lewiston, there's a couple of hospitals over there, mm -hmm. and, and Maine Med is 30 miles away, but we're only 50 yeah. miles away, so. That's a tough know, one. It's a tragic and situation. It yeah. certainly is a tragic situation. So, but not all tragedy has gone on in Lincoln County. No. It's over, it's over, it's over. What do you got? What have I got? The brush walk is over. The cancer walk is over. And? And? All the, all the, spit, all the case with the spitting is over. Yeah. Yeah. So, Basically, you don't like to use the words like caved or gave in <laughs> or, you know, whatever. No, they say, save that for the federal trials going on down in Georgia. Yeah, yes. They've caved down there. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, Jeff Spinney, he's got to keep his boat launch. They're Limited use. Uh, now, who's going to yeah. sit there yeah. and monitor that? Yeah. How many people use that? Right. And I don't think that that was ever designed to be a public boat ramp no. anyway, was it? The guy just wants to put a couple of boats in. So... Anyway, so... Boy, it sure costs a lot of money to come to this kind of well, ending. Well, uh, $100,000 for Alner to, to give But I will give, give the guy. citizens of Alner a lot of credit. You look at that picture, that, that has to be half the, half the population of Alner yeah. right there. Yeah, they want to know what's going on. They want to know what's going on. Yeah, well, what's going on is they, the town just lost their case, and the guy got to get what he wants, so yeah. basically. How about my friend Gary Stone? Great guy, character oh, yeah. county this week. We all know Gary. And, always going to uh, smile, yeah. always going to hand out, shake yeah. hands, say hello, how you doing? I think Gary kisses more girls than you. 
<laughs> so anyway. Well, I only kiss one, and that's my wife. Yeah. Well, I, you know. <laughs> anyway, Gary. Gary's a great guy, and he and very, he's got two outstanding young men. Yes, he does. Sons. Uh, yeah. Mine's uh, in medical school. Yeah. 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 Ben and Ben and Sam. They. Uh, and, the, and Sam has gone back to school, too. Yes, he has. Yeah, so uh, good for them. So we got another TV show. You think this TV show with Mary Kay Rennie and Mashka Kelly is competing with What's Up? Uh, I can't. There's no competition. No, no. <laughs> Give up, girl. But, but the guy doing it, Tyler Davis, from, yeah. from his, he's trying to get his uh, video business going. Yeah. He's an excellent videographer, yeah. and the show is very good. So, yeah. uh, uh, anyway. so anyway, we got the first top half of the paper done. Yep. Yeah. It's, so, it's historical. Society, they um, they kind of folded there for a while, and uh, we got a new. There's a, a gentleman came forward, or a person came forward with some money, and they revived the Edgecombe Historical Society. So the picture of Carrie Smith there with all kinds of files. They so. have reached out to us, Bobby, and this is not in the paper, so this is breaking news, I'm going to yeah. tell you. Edgecombe's got that 250th birthday party yeah. coming yeah. up next year, yeah. and they want us to do something. So that's really important news. So mm -hmm. I, just, yeah. I just thought you needed you to just, know that. You just heard it here, folks. You heard it right here. And a uh, picture of Larry's lovely wife, Sue, on the front page here. Uh, she's uh, very involved in the cancer walk this year. And uh, uh, She's what, a cancer they survivor. Talking, they're talking uh, raise 40 grand. They raised right? 40 grand. Yeah, yeah, Good yeah. For them. She and did a great job of it because of the weather. They switched it to the YMCA. And kudos hats, to, kudos hats to off. the Y. Kudos to Casey Clark, Kelly, yeah. and all her team down there. That you know, her, her maintenance folks, Ron and, and Jeff, and all those guys. They just made it happen. And it was so spe I mean, it was so. It wasn't until the last minute you pick up the phone, you call the Y. Listen, we're in a jam here. Yeah. Come on in. Yeah. And, and it worked out great. I mean, it was Saturday. I think it was Saturday afternoon. The whole thing got changed around. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was great. I know I enjoyed it. I'd be in the MC of it. We were warm. I've done it in the rain, Bobby. And it's not a lot of fun. Yeah, right. Uh, so it was a lot of fun. And uh, my buddy Orville Lee played a little music. And uh, they raised a pile of money. And uh, a good time was had by all. Well, how about the, the, the water at the Madomic Middle School? First of all, they had to close a while back because of contaminated yep. water. And now they had to close for a week because of a bad pump. And, you know, the way of the world now, you know, years ago, you know, five years ago, the pump went bad. You'd have a new one by the end of the day. Well, those days are over. Well, my, <laughs> wife, my wife's uh, Head Start program up in Augusta Garden area, they lost a boiler in one of their schools yesterday, day before, day before yesterday, Monday. And that's eight, six to eight weeks before they can even get a boiler, let alone install it. So what do you do with 30 or 40 kids that are in a school, they got to displace them all, you know, thankfully she has other schools around the Augusta Garden area, but that's 30 or 40 kids being displaced. I mean, she worked from daylight to dark plus yesterday with her team moving kids around and, and equipment and stuff, and I'm just crazy. Well, you know, it, you, crazy. you get into a situation, you know, that's, that sounds, that's, that's pretty, that's emergency. That's it was an emergency. That's an emergency. It was an emergency. It was all hands on deck for, yeah. for her school, you know, and Maybe, we're talking you know, kids, babies up to four years old. I mean, maybe they maybe they make the boilers in Kansas or something. They have to send a. I can go to Kansas and back in less than six weeks. Yeah, <laughs> I, can, I, I can go back up to Kansas and back in less yeah, than six two weeks. Two days. Yeah, yeah. Two days out, two days back, and yeah. I'm my boiler. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so and, I don't know. Uh, down in Newcastle, because they got this historic review ordinance coming up, and I tell you, from the people I've talked to, they're not a bunch of happy campers about this. It's not happening this year, I can yeah, tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> they think they're, uh, I, I'm not going to use the word chicken and out, but I will say chicken and out, because they don't want to deal with it this year. they got too much on their plate. Yep. they got the Lynch Road, uh, Culver's. And, and speaking of the Lynch Road, they're going to put a bridge, I think, out to Lynch Road, yeah. aren't they? Because yeah. that Culver's been a problem for years. Well, they've replaced that bridge, I don't know, Seth Hager told me like 20 odd years ago they replaced that bridge and then they the state wanted to put a culvert in because you have to go state yeah, right, monies in right. there they put a culvert in it's washed out I think he said this is the second time or third time it's washed out yeah. in 20 years yeah. and so they're going back to a bridge yeah good yeah <laughs> who who are these people that engineer this kind of stuff can you imagine how much money that's cost I mean that's a million dollar job over there yeah you know? Oh, that's what a bridge is going to be more. But in the long run, it's the way to go. Yeah, and then we'll never have to do it again. Yeah. 
you know, so I don't know. And it opens that waterway up a little bit for canoes and stuff to get up. I just want to let you know, Larry, we've covered the first page. Finally. Only took 10 minutes to do yeah. it, but yeah, that's, yeah, that's all, right. all right. As soon as I am ill prepared to read this paper today, Bobby. Yeah. I can't well, even get the page open and turn it. <laughs> well, we got, well, what you want to, because you really got to open that page, because now we haven't, who knew that there would be such a thing as a fragrance bar? You know? I know it. You go, you walk in, they say, Larry, you want to go have a smell? Yeah. And you go down, you walk down, and you smell all different types of fragrances. But anyway, they're going to, they have this down on Hodgson Street. So it's Dujardin is the name of the shop. So you go into Dujardin, and... Uh, and whereabouts on Hodgson Street? There's only like three houses well, on Hodgson Street. It's in somebody's, it's, it's, uh, in somebody's garage, I believe. Oh, yeah. So anyway, it's... Uh, Two Hodgson Street. Oh, that's the first house on the right. Yep. That's, I used to live in that house, Bobby. You did? I did, yeah. I lived there I'm for one... I'm surprised they got the smell out of it. Yeah, that's right. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Huh. Well... We got an Army basic training grad, Zachary Hanna. He's a Lincoln Academy grad. He's graduated from uh, he's uh, graduated from basic combat training at Fort Moore, Georgia. His parents went down for the um, award. How about Holly Stover, huh? Holly's a great gift to this Lincoln County, I'll tell you. She just got, she just got the one, she's uh, got the uh, Citizen of the Year Award from the Booth Bay Region Chamber. And uh, also we got, and we got Kate Rice down there. She's the winner of the Educator of the Year. Couple of winners in Booth Bay. Yes, they are. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. We didn't talk about that uh, Faith the Hippo at that cancer walk. walk. Yeah. She, that was a, she was a character. I'm not sure who was in the who in the hippo costume, but she was a she was a character. Had a yeah. good time. Yeah. Had a real good time. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you, I you know, this this uh, American Song Dog, it's a presentation. I know people have gone to this presentation. Yeah. This guy is um, Jerry Vistian is uh, he's an authority on coyotes and he gives a talk and about coyotes in the first get Congregational Church Fellowship at 28 High Street in West Cassett, they're going to have a talk by Jerry Vistian. So anyway, it's going to be 1230 and uh, Thursday, November 2nd. Yeah. I think he spoke at the Skidumpha. I think he gave his talk at the Skidumpha and somebody saw it. Um, so anyway, Oxbow Brewery up there in just north of me in Newcastle, they're going to have a show um, noon to 6 on Saturday, October 28th. That's this Saturday. And it's uh, with crafts, all different crafts and artisans from the area. And they're going to bring their goods up there. And I'm sure there'll be some interesting things. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Wiscasset's got a, a couple of planning board situations. They got Tucker Chevrolet down in Waldeboro wants to come in to uh, Wiscasset. They want to, it's over by Big Al's area, over by there, and they want to put a car dealership in there. And they're dealing with the setbacks and all that. And they got another are they willing to build? Are they going to build it? Do they want to build a, I didn't, I didn't read that whole story because I just started this paper. Is it might be just storage. I'm not sure. But anyway, you know, car I wonder if it's the old Napa building over there. That's got a pretty big parking lot. Yeah, it might you know, be. And they could even do a one or two bay garage there if they it wanted to. It might be. And, you know, uh, or just tear it down and start over. But there's not a lot of room, but yeah. you could certainly put so 20 vehicles a 70 up there. Uh, What's cast there is a 75 foot setback from the property line. And I think they got to waive that. They said something like maybe they got 70 feet. But the other thing is Jeremy Myers, he wants to put in a tap room, but it sounds like he just wants to sell beer and take it away. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. it's not, I don't think it's on-premises consumption. Yeah, I don't know. See over there in Waldebro, the Rockland Saving Bank's not closed because they don't yeah. have enough people to staff it. Boy, I tell you. That's, you don't see that very often. No. 
Especially a bank. Especially, especially a bank. Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a, that's a nice building. Well, it's a beautiful building. Yeah. It's not that old either. No. But it makes me wonder why they can't staff it. Are they not being competitive with wages? As, as we both know, Bobby, that in this area we have Camden and the First and Bangor Savings, which are the big big boys in the neighborhood. Yeah. But they've raised their pay scale up, so people are making yeah. a half-decent wage now. Yeah. Even tellers are $18, and $19 an hour. And I know that now. these banks still are a little short. Yeah. Help. Yeah. Yeah. And they have up their pay scale. I know that. Yeah. Um, so we got Don Rima. Don Rima is back on the circuit, man. He's been he's going to be speaking at the uh, Waldeboro Library October 28th, this Saturday. And uh, he's a bird specialist, folks. Yeah. He's, he knows his stuff. He's a birder. Yep. He's a bird. How about this? Uh, there's a new inn, the Waldeboro Inn, that uh, Rebecca Cooney writes this week about um, well, Alexa Stark. She's an innkeeper of Waldeboro. So, anyway, she spent 20 years out in Oregon. Yeah, she's up Stalls. There used to be Stalls Bar a long time ago, which right. is up there just past the Opera House yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, I've been in there. Have you? Yeah. We'll no, do a show over there. That'd be yeah. kind of fun. She's got a, she, of course, in the good weather, she's got a nice little setup in her barn. Yeah. And she's got a bar in there, yeah. a wine bar. But she's running three rooms. She's renting three rooms. And uh, so when I was talking to her, she said, uh, well, I have four rooms, but I'm going to live in one of them. Yeah. So, there you go. Anyway. Got to live somewhere, I guess. Yeah. Madomic, yep. this is what makes Madomic so good in basketball. They got a girls' youth basketball clinic going on. Well, the next page, somewhere here, I saw it just briefly. The boys have got a thing going on, too. Yeah. yeah. How about the Legion, Larry? Did you know anything about this? No, uh, what's that? The Legion that? is thinking of moving. Well, yes, I did. Well, the Y wants, to, I, I'm sure the Y might like the building. You know, because they could put their daycare in there. I think the building they're in now, up there on uh, on Back Meadow Road, off Back Meadow Road, I think the building's a little big uh, for them. It, it, I I would agree with you. Yeah. I don't, what are they going to do with it? And it certainly is out of out of the way. Yeah. Uh, they own a, that. Well, I don't know if they own it now, but they the the Y is trying to buy it. That's a that's just kind of like an iconic place in town. Yeah. You say to anybody's lived here any more than six months or a year. The American Legion, Damascus Scott Route One. They know exactly where you're talking about. Correct. You know, yep. uh, it, and but it's big enough. It's not. It's big enough, but it's not too big. Yeah. This other building is huge up there. Yep. I mean, there's a lot of room. Well, big downstairs. You know, uh, the uh, commander, the Post 42 commander. That's a number of the Legion. Brian Coffin. He's talking to Nobra Selectman about um, you know relocating to that building. He's talking about an entertainment license and a liquor license and a thing that. <laughs> no, no, is not too educated on that kind of stuff. No, they're not. No, but so. they don't have any ordinances against it either. No. So, so you know, I, I don't know. I, that, I, uh, you know, I, it would be a great thing for the walk. I really oh, would. Oh, absolutely. To have the daycare right there. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and I think it's the right size. And p plenty of parking and whatnot. And, yep. You know, they've got the facilities upstairs and downstairs, bathrooms, and, you know, they've, they've got a lot of things going for it. Yeah. Especially with a, a really full uh, well, staff. Well, one thing I wanted to mention to you, Larry, and this is your chance. You can learn to knit. You can go. I already to know the, how to knit, Bobby. Well, then, do you? I do. Okay. Well, well you, let's put it this way. I did 50 years ago. Yeah. Well, it's like <laughs> riding, I could knit pot heads. I could knit mittens. It's like riding a bike. Yeah. Well, you know? really, I don't know. I haven't picked well, up a set of needles you, for a long if time. If you know how to knit, then you can jump right into the knitting circle. Up well, I might just, along the way. Maybe November I might do 6th. that. I was, you know, I, I felt for you because I thought you didn't know. So they have a, they're going to have an instructor there. On My great grandmother taught me how to knit when I was about 10, 11 years yeah. old. Yeah. 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 Potholders. I was a good pot. Yeah. yeah, we had to put the thumb on. I couldn't do the thumb. Well, every time I burn my hand on a pot, I'll think of you. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I'll knit you some pot, pot holders. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah, what do we got here? Well, maintenance, uh, Jefferson uh, Selectman, I think they're looking around their town office and just deciding that things are getting a little run down up there. That sounds so like it. They're uh, wanting to... Uh, Mahjong is back at the Y. I saw That's that. That's really important. I saw that. Mahjong, you know, it, Kat Crozier, he, she... Um, she was pushing Mahjong, and then all of a sudden it went away, but it's back. It's back. It's back. They're going to play right in the lobby. Yep, they're going to start Thursdays at 10 o'clock, yep. 10 a.m., 10 to 1. I think their theory is if they play right in the lobby, you know, they can pull people right in. We ought to go down and do a show of those guys doing Mahjong yeah. and find out what it's all about. Yeah. And it's right at that time. We're we'll filming 10 o'clock in the morning, folks. A very, folks. very interesting show would be you and I sitting at a Mahjong table with two professionals. 
You, you want us, everybody know how really slow we are about picking things up? Yeah, actually, I take that back. I don't think we should do that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no, no, but it wasn't one of your better ideas. I, 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 I could oh, do shoot. better than that. Yeah, yeah. But Glenn Chadbourne outdid himself. Yeah, he did. That picture is like, how long, you know, how long does it take him to do something like that? I don't know. Yeah. So. Where's he come up with the ideas? Well, that's, that's, <laughs> you know, that's well, he goes to Mike's place I every did. morning. He does. He goes to Mike's place. Yeah. That's where he gets them. Well, probably. So anyway, the uh, Mary Sheldon writes about how satisfied she was with uh, Apple Fest this year, and nobody wants the private electric company. So no. the, the, the I don't. Uh, yeah. The uh, letters. You know, you are, know what I relate to Bobby is. I'm, I'm not saying that those private electric companies don't work good because there are some in the state, but it would be like Hager Enterprises that does a great job plowing the road, trying to plow the whole state. They don't have the manpower. They don't have the infrastructure. They don't have the plan to do it. Yep. I mean, Central Maine and Versant and, and Bangor Hydro have been around for 100 years. They, they got it down to, you might not like the way they, they fix the wires and all that all the time, but they got it down to a science and how to do it. Editorial this week, because it's about Mr. Spinney's boat ramp. Um, I kind of disagree about it being a democracy, yeah. a democratic decision. Um, yeah, well, we won't. It's over. That took, you're gonna, you're took gonna, a lot of money to make it. You promise me we won't talk about that again. That well, so, we'll anyway. Um, Coastal Rivers has got a program on Wabanaki in Indians and Traditions, October 30th. And uh, we've got a uh, Whitefield Library. They got a, a knitting circle going on November 4th. So this, must, this is knitting week next week. I guess. So Maybe yeah. I'll have to sharpen up my needles. Yep. Lunch and Learn, the Region Chamber of Commerce is going to do a thing on fraud detection. Yeah, we don't have big numbers, and, and I've actually got a little insight on that because I talked to Tammy Plummer. I've, I've, we've had her in uh, for community conversations, and it's fascinating. Yeah. It's a fascinating topic. It's fascinating what these banks have to do oh, to protect your accounts and whatnot and how they they have people every day that yeah. are working on this stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. So yeah. I mean, we got four different or five different banks that are going to sit down and talk about it. It's uh, 15 bucks lunch, and you get a lunch yeah, out of it. Yeah, folks. It's upstairs at the uh, Rising Tide, and yeah, folks, I sure hope we get you know eight or ten people, or a dozen people, or a couple dozen people in to sit down and see it because it's going to be a fascinating talk. And if we don't get the numbers, we won't do it. But yeah. sure hope we can. And uh, the domestic violence, uh, there's going to be a talk on that down to the uh, down to the library, and we yeah. may go down and film that too. Yeah, there's, uh, they've done a good job on promoting that. That's a uh, it's called Break the Silence. And uh, yeah, that's going to be done at the library, Larry? Yes, yep. Potter Hall. Yep. Yeah, in fact, I may get down and speak to them today about getting that done. Yep. Yeah, what else we got here? Because Hall of Fame, you know these folks? Matt uh, McKenzie? Uh, I do. Matt McKenzie was quite a basketball player. He was. And Missy Williams. What was Missy's claim to fame? Female Athlete of the Year, finalist in Lincoln County News. Um, so she, uh, let's see, Missy, let's see. Yeah, the Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, Dana, Dana Dow, he got, he got uh, named Midco Sports Legend. Yeah. Uh, he's a legend, all right, but I didn't know that he ever played sports. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, he, he does a heck of a job with the Midcoast Hall of Fame. He does. And he, and he dedicates a certain section of his building over there. To he that. does. Yeah, yeah, we actually did uh, Hall of Fame coach Jim Grafham over there, Walter Bernita. Correct. Uh, one of the first Talking Town Talk shows yeah. I ever did. <laughs> so yeah. the old Juniper Hill School up there in Alna, there's um, an art retreat center is being proposed up there. And uh, hmm. Abigail Goldberger and husband Kevin O'Shaughnessy, they're seasonal residents of Walnut in San Francisco, California. Unbelievable. You know what Dana did do? He did do the school book at Madonna Valley for quite a while. Come to think <laughs> yeah. <of it>. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know. Is that, is that qualified of being in the Sports Hall of Fame? 
How about Bristol? Geez, they got eighteen thousand dollar fine. Yeah, wow. Bristol. They before Rachel Bizarro took over, they had a, you know, I guess they had an in, or interim, or they had no town manager, or something like that. And uh, so anyway, they didn't put in W two forms. It's a hundred and hundred sixty four W two forms were not were not submitted on time. So. Anyway, they, and uh, they're probably the chances are they'll get that switched around. Hmm. Now, if, if they're going to wait though from the to, to hear from the IRS, they're going to wait a long time. Mm -hmm. Wait a long time. Yeah. Yeah, we got we we only got a couple minutes left here, Bobby. We got to talk about this Madonna Valley football team. A uh, tough one. Oh man, I watched that game. That was a tough one. Tough one. But well, I guess that Oceanside quarterback. He's he's, a, he's, he's a, a real foot, deal. He's huh? the real deal. He's a heck of a foot. He's a heck of a basketball player too. Him and okay. his brother. But uh, it was a back and forth game, and uh, but Madonna could never quite get the get get ahead. You know, when they had a chance to stop them, they couldn't, you know, but. Yeah, tough break. South for the Bristol undefeated down there in yeah, soccer this year. Good huh? for them. Yes, Look, sir. 10 and 0? Yeah. Yeah. Morse eliminates the Lincoln Academy girls. And we've the got the uh, Madonna girls are going to play Saturday at noontime. Uh -huh. I think we're going to go live stream that. Okay. So that will be out for people to see. Hmm. The boys, I don't know how. I don't know how the Madonna, the uh, Link Academy boys made out last night. Does it say anywhere here in the paper? Mm, no. no. I know the cross country team did very well. Um, Elliot O'Mahony, he plays sixth, and their cross country team is going to the state tournament. They play sixth in the uh, the Twin Brook Recreation Tournament. So. Great Salt Base soccer team. They lost to Camden Rockport in the semifinal of the bus line. Uh, so. Chicken pie supper at the Whitefield. Well, at the Whitefield Grange Hall up there. Yeah. Yeah. Last year it was uh, takeout only, but this year there's sit no down, takeout. Sit down, and enjoy yourself. Baked yeah. bean supper, the Edgecombe Community. What's the day Church. of that, Larry? Uh, that is November fourth. That's yeah. a week from Saturday. Yeah. And the same thing. There's going to be a community church at Edgecombe is going to have a. And then there's a bean hole, a cornhole tournament. Yeah, and the Lincoln Academy. They're building their own cornhole. Um, yeah. Cornhole. What do they call them? Cornhole uh, games. Yeah, something like that. Cornhole board. Yeah. Yeah. And a nice story about Dennis Hilton. He was a, a business person of the year this year. And it's also, it's really nice to see that Madonna High School has a uh, outdoor club where these kids go outdoors. Yeah. And uh, so they could piggyback onto a Haley Bison where where her Heidi roots is going on. Yeah, a tip of the cap to our friend uh, Lydia Kraft. She uh, she got the Maine Social Worker of the Year award. Good for her. So anyway. Uh, you got your Hall we got to wrap this up, Bob. We only got 10, 15 seconds left here. Have you got your Halloween costume all ready to go? Uh, yeah, I'm going to put my hat this way. There you go. Yeah. You going to tip your glasses too? Yeah, yeah I got new glasses. <laughs> Folks, we, we, you heard it first. So if you see a guy walking down the street with his hat cockeyed, yeah. that is Bobby in his Halloween costume. The Mayor Mills, Bobby Ware over there. I'm Larry Sign. They got Dinah Day behind the camera. TV Toby is home today with Mama. So uh, for, that's all for us folks here at LCTV. We'll see you next time, folks. Chase Tree and Tractor Service with 25 years of experience in tree removal. Serving the mid-coast of Maine, licensed and insured Maine Arborist. Whether it's a pesky blowdown or a hard-to-get tree that needs removal. When you need an experienced professional, Jake Chase is the man for the job. Call 207-242-8961 or email him at chasetreeattractorservice.jc at gmail.com. LCTV is your nonprofit community media station. Please donate at lctv.org to keep us strong. Thank you.